Hey, this is Valve from CRISP. So the CRISP REST API is the common interface you can use to write and read data on your CRISP website. For instance, I can use the CRISP API to update my CRISP CRM contacts data. Um, for instance, push keys and values to the CRM. As well, I can use the REST API to, for instance, to read my uh, messages that I have with my own customers. So I may use all those uh, data uh, to synchronize it with other systems, for instance, uh, internal systems in my company uh, from CRISP. I can also like, synchronize data that get pushed by internal systems to CRISP. So CRISP provides uh, convenience libraries in all the most common programming languages such as JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Python, and much more. So I may want to use, for instance, the JavaScript library uh, to build an RGS integration with the CRISP REST API. So first, before using the libraries, I need to have a way to authenticate to the REST API. For that, I need to generate a token. So tokens are like passwords, but they never expire uh, until you revoke them. So they are used in your code to authenticate against the REST API. This is what guarantees that you are allowed um, and safe to use uh, to access your website on CRISP. So tokens generated through the CRISP marketplace. CRISP marketplace can be used to create public and private integrations. So in this case, since I will build an integration for my own private use, uh, which is synchronizing CRM data on CRISP, I will basically create uh, a private plugin on CRISP Marketplace. So let me show you how this works uh, by creating a plugin on the CRISP Marketplace. <laughs> So I have a website on CRISP, which is called Acme. This website has CRM contacts. So I would like to be able to add custom data to my CRM contacts, so data here. So I can add data manually, for instance, manual, yes, okay. But what I would want to do is to add data automatically through my integration. So I can do that with the CRISP REST API. In order to do that, I need to go to the CRISP Marketplace and create an account. So I am logged in into my CRISP Marketplace account right now. So all I need to do is create a new plugin. In this case, a private plugin. I will na uh, name it like CRM Data Sync, for instance, and describe my plugin. Um, let's say small plugin to synchronize synchronize uh, CRM data, okay, I'm creating the plugin. Okay, so the Chris Marketplace is providing me with uh, development tokens. So in this case, the development tokens can be used while developing my integration. So I will just go to plugin right now. So to start developing an integration right away, we can use the development token in our card. Before we can use the development token, we need to add a trusted website. So we need to go to the marketplace settings and add a trusted website. So it asks for the website ID to be trusted. So I need to go to Crisp, click on settings, website settings, website, and set of instructions. And I have my website ID here. So I click copy. I go back to the marketplace, I paste the website ID, I click on next, and then it asks me for my CRISP account email. I just filled uh, the CRISP account email and password so I can add the trusted website. So now it's verifying my information and it says success. So it's cool. So now I have my website ID here. And basically go to my integration code which we will review later and paste the website ID um, where it needs to be pasted, okay? Then I go back to the marketplace, 
my plugins, Serum Data Sync tokens, and I can basically copy my token. So tokens are made of an identifi identifier and key. Uh, so I just paste identifier and key in my code. Okay. So we don't have anything left to do from now in the marketplace because we do have a development token, so we can start testing. So this code actually is not JS code. Um, let me show it to you first. Uh, so I created the package.json in a folder, for instance, REST API server. Uh, so it's very basic. Um, it requires um, the crisp API dependency, which is uh, available on NPM GIS, so you can acquire it. So I'm using the 5.0 uh, version, uh, which is the lattice at the moment. Uh, so I have a terminal here. So I'm in the same folder. So I, I should just like npm install the dependency. Okay. And then let me show you the actual code. So here I just require the API as documented on npm.js with me. Then I configure some constants. So my website ID. Uh, my token identifier and token key for the API. So this is common to all my script, it doesn't change. Then I just find in some functions to do my work. So looking at the documentation of the crisp API wrapper from Node.js, um, I can see that going to people with the crisp CRM, I can basically uh, update use this function so update people data with this method um, which is here so I'm pushing people data on the website for a target email address it's a data key and data value which is which is um, given the time I push the data since a profile may not uh, exist when I push the data in my CRM. In this case, I chose to create the profile just before if it doesn't exist. If it does exist, I'm doing nothing. I'm just like pushing the data. So I created a function here, which is here, which returns promise um, when it's done doing its work. So first it checks if the profile exists for the email address. If it doesn't, uh, so the API will reply with people not found. And I'm creating this people profile. So I'm using to check if the people profile exists this method. And to create the people profile, I'm using this method. So let's try out this script. So at the bottom of the script, I added calls to my function add profile data for my own email address with the data key of products and laptop. So let me pull the script right now. So I just hit node index.js because it's the name of my script. I run it. So it's authenticating to the API. So then I'm um, pulling the, checking if the contact exists with this um, method. Um, and so it's existing, and then it's adding the data for Valerian at crisp.chat. Okay, so let me just check now in crisp that the data was added for my contact. So I go to contact, contact I push data for, and I can see it's been added, product, laptop. So as you have seen, it's easy to integrate with crisp APIs in a matter of minutes. Um, here we used a development token from the marketplace, but this only applies for development purposes, as it states. So once you want to use your script uh, for long term on your server's production purposes, please request production token. So in this case, I will show you how to request a production token. I'm going back to the marketplace here. And I'm scrolling to production token. So here, I already started requesting a scope. So this scope 
probably should mean something to you. Website people data. We are here in the script writing on people data. So production scopes actually are required because production tokens do not have access to all the API routes. Production token actually lets a plugin be installed on multiple websites at once to share the install link. So it's critical that your plugin actually only have access to some very specific website data and not everything for security reasons. So if you go to our documentations and go, for instance, to the REST API reference and where I'm now and click on the API route you're using. So here, update people data, which is the route we are using. You can see the re required scope here, which is website people data. So since it's a patch, patch HTTP request, um, we will request the write permissions another read. Uh, the read is only for get and head. So we don't only need this scope actually, because our script does not only update people data, it also checks if people profile exists and adds new people profile. So I only need to go back to the docs and actually check on this route add new pro people profile. So I can see it's a write scope because it's a post on website people profiles. I'm just doing add my scope again. So I can solve my submission. So website people profile, right? So let me check the scope for the check if people exists, which is also a method we are called. So it's website people profile as well, but it was read. So, um, I mean, it's a good thing because I just need this scope it was read and write for checking and creating a new profile. As well, um, I need to add again the website people data scope with write permissions as we saw before. Uh, create, so I need to describe um, why I need to use this uh, scope. Okay, so I added uh, all the descriptions. Uh, I can basically request a production token. So the crisp teams will uh, validate your submissions and issue you a production token shortly. The good news, I just received an email from the crisp marketplace um, telling me that my plugin subscription has been approved. So I can basically go to the marketplace. So I refreshed here. And I can see my scopes have been accepted. So now before I can use my production token, which is already generated here. Uh, well, let me just uh, put it in the code now. So here, here, okay, it's up to date. Um, I need to publish my plugin. Because as you will see, if I run the script as before, um, there is like uh, errors accessing my crisp API now because the token is not yet valid because the plugin is unpublished. I need to go to settings and publish the plugin. So here it says that the plugin configuration is incomplete. So I need to configure a support link. So just here I will uh, use a placeholder support link. Okay, I will upload a plugin. So let me just upload my face, okay? So now I can publish my plugin. My plugin is set to private. So once it will be published, it will not yet be subscribed to my website. So I need to use a private install link to add the plugin on the website I want to integrate with. So let me publish the plugin. Okay, so I don't need a business name here. Uh, it's just like for People publishing public plugins, having their brand shown here with a logo. So the plugin publication has been accepted. Uh, so I can see it's published now. The published status is appearing. So let me just retry my script. Okay, it's not still not working. So why is that? 
uh, well, simply because I need to install the plugin on my website. I just need to click here. Okay. Okay. So it just installed the plugin on my website. So let me retry now. Okay, it's working. So by the way, if you need some help on the Crisp REST API, you can go anytime to docs.crisp.chat. And this is where you will find all the references for the REST API, some guides um, about how to authenticate for, to the REST API, for instance, and generate the tokens uh, with some examples um, of integrations and stuff like that. For instance, I can get links to the libraries. And in the Node Crisp API uh, project, for instance, I have an example folder I can use to find some integration examples that I can readily run on my website. I just need to download the Git repository, change all the values here, here, and execute the example to try it out. Thank you for watching this video. So the Crisp API, as you've seen, is powerful. It lets you access a lot of features uh, that the Crisp apps also have access to, such as managing all the conversation uh, meta information, like the user avatar, uh, CRM contacts, uh, fetching the message, updating the message, and stuff like that. So it's full featured for all the developers. So if you're watching this video, most likely you're going to develop a private integration for your own personal or business use. Please be reminded that you can also build public plugins on Crisp. Public plugins are public integrations that any Crisp user can install in a click from the Crisp dashboard. So the process is exactly the same with public plugins, except that we require a bit more information like descriptions, screenshots, and stuff like that, because it's going to appear on the public integration page of CRISP to all CRISP customers. So we wish you will build powerful things on CRISP.